Okay, guys, we're back again. Stream Hydrogen Labs. We put our other electrolyte out of the jug we had in there. So I say we emptied the distilled water with my little secret electrolyte. And I don't really want to speak of that secret electrolyte exactly yet on what it is. So I make sure there's no adverse reactions or or anything, you know, like salt puts off a of chlorine gas, which I don't like at all. That scares me. Um, and believe me, this is no trick here. This is no bull. Blah, blah, blah. This is a very safe stuff that I have in here. Well, besides the, now this is sodium hydroxide that's in there, just a small pinch. Plus, the little secret electrolyte additive I'm talking of. And it's all around us. It's so safe you can put it in your eyes or drink it. And I'm not recommending you doing it, but people do it. So, and I've probably given enough information, smart enough people can figure it out. Not saying anybody's dumb, but... I just don't want to say much till I, you know, show you a little bit more. Okay, we're running about eh, 20 amps. I'm, you know, I've got it set at 20 amps, 14.8 volts, which is, you know, a decent car car alternator output as long as you're not running the heater, the wipers the air conditioning and the rear window defroster all at once you know so you're not going to hurt the alternator I'm going to turn the power supply on and just look at the explosion of the reaction and this is the cheese grater cell and I, oh, I will say something too um, I tightened up my gap a little bit on my neutral plate not much at all that's really the only difference and that didn't increase the production hardly at all well I shouldn't say hardly at all a little bit but then I got to thinking about this bottle of stuff I had around the house here and I thought you know let's give her a couple of shots and see what happens and it's not alcohol either at all so, check it out. Tell me what you think. Ready? One, two, three. Start your stopwatches and watch how quick it takes to fill it. Here we go. Now, mind you, that's 12 volts. Well, I mean, 13.8 DC. It's actually running about, actually, oh, 18 amps over there. I'd pull the camera away and go over to the that, but I want you to see this. That's crazy. Look at it go. That is just unbelievable. And it's swirling. It is such a, a, a tornado of an action going on in there. We'll sit here and we'll just watch it for a minute. And that cell also, like I said, is producing one volt. And I'll be damned if I can find a diode, or not a diode, but an LED light around here, any frickin' where. Because I want to hook an LED up to it and see if it'll light an LED. I have no idea where any of them are at right now. Because we're still trying to get this shot back together after the move. And so on and so forth. It's getting better. Bring this up a little bit. You can see the bubbling on the top too. Oh, that's not too bad. Can't catch the swirling though. The camera is not the greatest. Maybe when I get some payback out of this, I'll buy a new camera. And then let's see here.
you got a little pop to her. But I tell you, by the reaction that thing's going. Let's see. Let's shoot the temperature. Got this neat little digital one. We're staying about mm, 89 degrees. Let me shoot it again. Up oh, 90. Shoot it again. 89. It can't make up its mind. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. As long as it stays that way. But that cheese grater cell always did seem to stay on the cooler side. Not a lot of plate space. My holes drilled. And I've got two different types of stainless in there. My neutral is different than my positive and negative plates. So, you tell me what you think. You know how to email me. I've got plenty of comments and texts, thanks. Mostly in my personal box. I'm not sure. If, and boy, I'll tell you, thank you everybody for your subscriptions and and uh, people putting me in their favorites. And I'm starting to put a few in mine, but I, I'm pretty picky about that. Not saying that I got anything against anyone, but. There's only a few I pick that interest me. And I mean, well, everybody's stuff interests me, but I look for the stuff that greatly interests me. Let's see, we'll hit her again. It's continuous. I mean, I don't know if the camera picks it up that loud, but it's, I'm going to have to put earmuffs on it's that loud. That out there in a flow test, I don't know if i got any pickle jars left. I blew them all up doing testing. Um, that thing ought to really kick some ass. And I just may turn that thing up to where it pulls about 40, 50 amps. And, and you know it's going to get warm. It will get warm at those amperages. I will um, I'll go back to my cooling unit idea. Now, next thing. I have the unit on a contour. I hate mixing these videos up. I'm not going to show it on this one. I have the unit on a contour. I was averaging... 23, 26 miles to the gallon, right around there, mixture of city highway driving. I put a two-plate cell on there. It's rather large. It's underneath the grill in the front by the air dam, so I get air across it. Pulse width modulator. No map enhancer hooked up yet. I have my scanner in there. My fuel trim is below 10%. Um... I'll show you the whole installation, but it looks to me as of this moment on three mileage tests, because you know me, I don't like to say anything or do anything or show anything till, you know, I've, you know, shown something or proven something halfway decent, because I don't want to waste anybody's time, but I'm getting anywhere from 60 to 70 miles to the gallon. Pretty crazy, huh? And that's without the map enhancer, or math, because I do not have a map on that vehicle. Interesting. See you next time.